Hello everyone. Welcome back to American Textbook Reading. Today we're going over Social Studies Book 3, Lesson 11, and we're continuing the theme of World of Work and Money. In this lesson, we're talking about from farm to you, from the farm to you. So in this lesson, we will discover different kinds of resources and we will also discover how apples go from a tree to your mouth. Oh, interesting. Okay, so let's take a look. First, as always, we start with the vocabulary. So let's learn some new words. The first word is actually two words, right? The first expression is two words and it's human resources. Human resources? That sounds a little strange, doesn't it? We're going to use humans as resources, but it's not that strange. And when you think about it, many different people have different skills or different talents, and we want to be able to use those skills or talents to help other people. So that's what it's meant by human resources, right? People's skills and abilities. I said talents, ability is the same as talent. So you could also say their talents. You are talented. You have certain abilities that you're good at, certain skills that you're good at. Those are your talents, right? That a company or organization can use. And of course, in a company or organization, there is a human resources department. And in that department, those workers are interested in how to best use the skills and talents of the people at the company. So that's what they're doing. That's what they should be doing. Okay, good. Human resources. Okay, next we have capital resources. Capital resources, what are those? In economic terms, capital usually means money. But in this case, the capital resources mean things like tools, tools like a screwdriver or a hammer, right? Machines, Actually, machines are a type of tool, right? They're a big uh, piece of machinery that does some action, like robots. Robots are machines. And buildings. Buildings are also capital resources, which you need to produce goods. Actually, we can also call these things assets. Asset. A-S-S-E-T-S. -S -S -E assets are things that a company owns, and they are they're another form of money because you can sell these things and get money for them. So capital, capital usually means money when you're talking about business. Capital investment, capital resources, these are things that the company has that are that's worth something. It's worth a certain amount of money. So capital resources are basically tools and tools, machines, buildings, they're all types of tools. They're things that allow or help the company to produce or to make products. Okay. An orchard. Now we've left like the industrial world and we've gone out into the countryside. Okay. So an orchard. An orchard is an area in the countryside. It's an open area. It's like a field where people grow fruit trees. Now when you think about food, there's a lot of different uh, vocabulary words that you can use for different types of growing food. You can say a field for when, when people grow corn or wheat, we just call that a field. But if you grow apples or oranges, uh, those types of fruit that grow on trees, we call those areas an orchard. So an orchard is a place where trees grow and the trees stay there, right? A wheat field, you cut down the, the whole plant, but an orchard, don't cut down the trees. The farmers will get very angry, right? So, so those trees stay there, but they produce fruit every year. It's an open area where people grow fruit trees and many different types of fruit. That's an orchard. Irrigation. Well, whether it's an orchard or a field, the farmer needs to get water to those plants because, of course, plants need water to live. Every, every living thing needs water. So how do they get water to an area, especially if it's not raining? Well, they set up an irrigation system. And irrigation is just means watering land through pipes to help crops 
grow. A long time ago, people would dig、uh, like these long trenches, and they would get the river, a nearby river or stream, to go through the trenches in their fields. But with modern technology. We can use pipes to carry the water into the field, and we can, you know, have little、uh, other tools that spray the water over the plants, or just holes in the pipe that will drip the water out into the field, so that the plants get the water they need to grow. Sort. Now, sort here is a verb, right? To sort. To sort. Let's imagine that you have a lot of toys. In your bedroom at home, you have marbles, you have little action figures, and maybe you have some games. Well, they're different kinds, right? So you're going to sort them. You're going to put all the marbles together. That's one kind. You're going to put all your action figures together. That's one kind. And you put all your games in one kind. If they're all mixed up, you know, you separate them and put them in different groups. That. Action separating into different groups is to sort, to arrange things in groups according to their kinds. So marbles over here, action figures over here, games over here. You have sorted your toys. In this case, we can sort. You can sort apples, and it looks like a factory. Maybe there are some humans also working there, and basically what they're doing is they're picking out like a good apple or、uh, the right color of apple, and they're putting them over here, and then the lower quality apples they're putting over there. So they're separating the apples according to maybe size, color,、uh, uh, whether they're damaged or not, and they're sorting those、uh, goods. Okay, next word is ship. Now, ship can be a noun. But it can also be a verb, right? You can think of a big ship, right? This looks like a big ship. It's a cargo ship. It is a cargo ship. It's a really big ship. But ship can also be a verb. To ship, I want to ship something to you. That means I go to the post office, put the thing in a package, and send it to you. That is to ship. To send something. By ship or another vehicle. If I send something to you, right? You live in another country, and I don't want to pay a lot of money. Sorry, and it doesn't matter that it takes a long time. It will. I go to the post office and give it to them. I say,、oh, it's okay. It takes a month. That's okay. It might take.、Uh, they might use a ship to get it to you. But if I say, no, it's very urgent. Your birthday is tomorrow. I want you to get it quickly. Then it will be shipped by plane, right? So you can have air shipment or a ground shipment. Okay, good. Ripe. When something is ripe, it is fully grown and ready to eat or to harvest. There's a difference between those. I'll talk about.、It. But think about an apple, right? If you go out in the orchard in the springtime, you look at the apple trees. There's no apples. Where are the apples? Well, after a little while, the flowers start to grow, right? And the flowers might turn into little buds, and they—they're little tiny apples. Don't eat those; Ugh, they're terrible, right? You have to wait until the apple is fully grown and it changes color, right, into like bright red or sometimes green. There are a lot of green apples, and when that apple looks great, when it looks like it's really ready to eat, then it is ripe. It is ready to eat, or. To harvest. What does harvest mean? Harvest means、uh, that you go to the orchard or to the field and you take the ripe fruit or vegetables and you collect it. You don't eat it, right? Because first of all, you can't eat all of that. <laughs> That's too much. Oh my gosh. Besides, the other problem is that you want to sell it, right? You don't want to. You don't eat it all because then you don't make any money. So you want to harvest it. You want to gather it together in bushels and then you ship it. To the marketplace, and that's where you will sell it. So harvest just means to gather when something is ready to gather it up. Okay. Load. Now I just talked about harvest, right? You gather all the things together, you put them into baskets, and then you put them onto a truck. You load it onto a truck. So load means to put something or someone. On vehicles, right? So if you have a baby brother or a baby sister, your parents will load your baby brother or sister into the back seat. You know, put the seatbelt on when you go on a trip. So they will load your baby brother or sister into a vehicle. They I hope your parents don't load you into the vehicle. You can get in the vehicle by yourself. 
Okay, so they don't need to load you in. But if you want to put things into a a car or a vehicle, like your groceries, you go to the store and you help mom put the groceries into the car. You're loading the groceries into your car. Of course, it's also、uh, companies do this a lot too when they transport goods, when they ship goods from one area to another. Okay. That is our vocabulary section for today. A lot of interesting words. Okay, let's go over a couple of main ideas for this lesson. The first idea is a journey of apples. Hmm, sounds like a novel, right? Sounds like a very interesting story. Well, it is an interesting story. Let's take a look. How does the apple go from the tree to your mouth? Right. Well, first. You want to grow the apples. We have growing apples, and where do apples grow? They grow in an orchard. Yes, good. They grow in an orchard. In an orchard, there are many trees, and the apples grow. And we talked about the process of apples growing. Now, when the apples are ripe, the farmers and helpers of the farmer they get together. And what do they do? They don't eat all the apples. They eat maybe eat some of the apples, but they harvest. They pick. The apples, and they put them into baskets. That's to harvest. They harvest the apples. Then they send the apples to a factory, and in the factory, the apples are sorted. You know, sometimes birds get to the apples, and they they pick pieces out, or worms or insects get inside the apple. You don't want those apples to go to the supermarket, so those apples are sorted out. Right, and if apples, if some of them fell down and they're bruised, you don't want to send those to the store. So you you sort the apples, the good apples and the bad apples, bad apples. Okay, the next thing you do is you process the apples. Now, sometimes the apple doesn't come in 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 you know the original raw state to your to your、uh, to your store or to your refrigerator. Sometimes people will use the apples to make other products like drinks, apple juice, or maybe apple pie. Right. So you, there needs to be a processing of the apples. So another factory will take the apples and they will process. Process means to change a raw material into a finished good. So process to process in this case means to change. From raw to finished product, finished product to finished, yeah, finished product. A finished product is something that has been changed from the raw state into a more、uh, complicated or refined state. For consumption. Remember, in the last lesson we talked about consumers. Consumers consume things. That's consumption. So they take the apples, the raw apples, and they'll change it. They may combine it with other things, or they may make it more pure. In this case, it looks like they're making apple juice. So they change the apples. They get the juice out of it. They put it in a plastic bottle, and that is the product. So then they have their product. What do they do with it? Well, they load it onto trucks. To ship it, and remember, ship can be like a ship, a boat, but ship can also be by、uh, by ship, by airplane, or by truck or by car.、Uh, it's transported from one place to another. In this case, by truck, and it where does it go? It goes to the supermarket or marketplace, and it's sold in a store. And then finally, you come along and you buy it. And it goes into your mouth. <laughs> okay, so that is the journey of an apple from the tree to your mouth. Okay, or maybe it's in your refrigerator now, but it will soon be in your mouth. Okay, good. So apple juice is good. Apple products are good. Raw apples are probably the best, most healthy. But a lot of other products are also made from apples. Okay. Next, let's talk about three kinds of resources. We talked about two in the vocabulary section. We talked about human resources. Human resources are the abilities and talents of human beings, and there are many. There are many abilities. Everybody has their own certain abilities or their own certain talents. When you grow, you will develop your abilities or your talents. To do a specific thing, hopefully it's something. Find the ability that you like doing. Find the talent that you 
enjoy and pursue that. And that's the best choice for you. But there are office workers, people who are good at using computers or analyzing data, you know, figuring things out. Uh, office worker will use their abilities or talents for that type of work. And that's a type of human resource. Other people uh, might enjoy or be better at working with their hands or working with machinery. They could be machine operators, right? They like looking at machinery and figuring out how it works or something. Robotics is an interesting field that's coming up. Maybe uh, you will work with robots in the future. You could be like a machine operator or a robot operator, which would be interesting. So those are different types of human resources. Next, we have capital resources. And as I explained before, capital resources are machines, tools, assets that a company uses in order to produce a good. Now, one other type of resource that we didn't go over in the vocabulary section, but is very important, we kind of talked about it, and those are natural resources. Right? We talked about an orchard, right? We talked about apple trees. Apple trees, trees that grow in nature, that's a natural resource. Yes, the farmer changes it a little bit. They might plant the trees in a row and give water through irrigation. That's true, but it's really a natural resource. Now, some other natural resources are, for example, a forest. What do we get from a forest? Well, we get wood from trees, and that is a resource that we use to make furniture, to make houses, to make many things. It's important, though, to protect our natural resources. We shouldn't cut down all the trees. So many companies that own land, and they're called logging companies, they will cut the trees down, but they won't cut all the trees down. They'll only cut a few trees here and there so that the forest still is surviving and new trees will grow in the place of the trees that are cut down. That is smart use of the natural resources. Another natural resource, we may not think about it, it's water. Clean water is an important natural resource and it's important that we make sure that it stays clean. The water, I'm talking about the water in streams, in rivers, in lakes. Not the water in the ocean. <coughs> Can't drink it. Look. Tastes horrible, right? It's very important, right? It's important that the seawater stays clean for fish and other things. Those are other natural resources. But when we're talking about water, we usually mean clean water, water that is safe to drink. We have to make sure that it stays clean, it's not polluted. Okay? So those are types of natural resources. So three types are three kinds of resources human resources, capital resources, and natural resources. Okay, very good. Now it's time for the reading section. Let's see how those words that we learned in the vocabulary and the ideas that we discussed fit into the reading passage. As always, as I read, please go ahead and read along with me or read along in your mind. Practice the pronunciation and focus on the key vocabulary that we learned. Are you ready? Let's begin. Where do the apples and other fruit that you enjoy come from? They usually come from orchards. Human resources, capital resources, and natural resources are important in bringing delicious apples into your home. People in the orchard are human resources that help to grow the apples. Capital resources like machines help people produce apples faster. Machines are used to grow and transport the apples. Irrigation keeps the apples delicious and healthy until they are ripe. The water used during irrigation is a kind of natural resource. When the apples are ripe, they are picked and sorted into healthy and unhealthy apples. They are then loaded into trucks, ships, or planes and shipped from the orchard to markets all over the world. Now you can buy the fresh apples at the supermarket. 
Okay, let's discuss how this reading passage was organized. In this case, we're looking at the reading skill classify. Classify means to put things into different groups. It's kind of like sorting, right? So you sort different ideas or different、uh, details into different groups. And in this case, we have three groups. Remember the idea we talked about: the different types of resources. So we can sort resources into different groups. We can classify them. We have human resources, we have capital resources, and we have natural resources. And over on the right side, we have examples of. Each one. So, what are human resources? From the passage, we saw that farmers grow apples in the orchard. So, farmers or gatherers in the orchard. I'll just put farmers here. Farmers, because that's easy. Farmers are human resources. Well, they're humans, and their skills are resources. Farmers in the orchard are an example of. Human resources, capital resources. What's an example? Well, what helped people produce apples? Remember, sorting the good apples from the bad apples. Of course, machines are used to do that. Machines, machines, machine. Oops, sorry, that's an S. Machines that help people produce apples. So those are capital resources. So that is an example of capital resources. Finally, natural resources. We talked about this. This is a very important type of natural resource. That is clean water. I'll just put water here. Water. Water、It、should be clean, of course. You don't want dirty water in your fields. Water used during irrigation is a natural resource that has helped to keep the app that helps keep the apples healthy. And delicious, of course, too. There's not enough water. Maybe the apples aren't delicious. So you have to have the right amount of water. Okay, so those are different types of resources that we can see in the reading section. And of course, resources are very important for us. They're very important for our life. And again, I'll say it again because it's very important. We must protect our natural resources. Human resources. As long as there are human beings, we have many different human resources. We have to develop them, of course, through education. Capital resources. We develop our capital resources through increasing technology. Now, natural resources have always been there. We don't need to develop them, but we need to protect them so that future generations can use them and have and that they have good access to these natural resources. Okay. Well, that wraps up this lesson. I hope it was interesting. Hope you learned a lot of interesting things, and that it helped with your English study. Thanks for studying with me, as always, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.